Well, keeping young talent in the state, it's a struggle Nebraska has been facing for years. So what's the answer? 3 News Now reporter John Kipper takes a deeper look at the issue and what lawmakers think could help people plant their roots as they search for the good life. The brain drain issue is a massive problem. We're losing money, essentially, um, and that's a major, major issue. For years, decades really, the state of Nebraska has had a brain drain issue, specifically with young people. They're looking at their opportunity for jobs and pay and, and maybe culture or, or nightlife, so to speak, and, and that's where you know sometimes the larger cities have, have more of a drop. That's David Drews, research coordinator for UNO's Center for Public Affairs. He classifies brain drain as the net migration of college educated adults moving out of the state. In Nebraska, 72% of people that do this are young, between the ages of 20 and 29. Over the last 10 years, Nebraska roughly loses 2,000 people a year to brain drain. It doesn't sound like a ton in any one particular year, but again, you add that up over 10 or 20 or 30 years, it gets up into the millions and billions of dollars of lost um, taxable revenue. This is a problem in over half the states, but Nebraska ranks pretty poorly, 40th overall. In the Nebraska legislature, it's often mentioned as a political football. Lawmakers saying their bill will help solve the problem. It's unreasonable. This is a way to encourage young people to come and stay. So I spoke with four lawmakers, some rural, some urban, two Democrats, two Republicans, asking what they believe would help solve the issue. 24-year-old Julie Slama is somebody who went to school out east and came home just a few years ago. I understood what I valued, and I valued the sense of community uh, that I could find in southeast Nebraska. For Slama, it boils down to taxes, housing, and jobs. Her district borders Kansas, Iowa, and Missouri. She knows peers who come to Nebraska to work but live and spend their money outside the state, mainly due to tax issues, specifically property taxes. You need to make sure young professionals have uh, the money available to pay taxes on their starter home. While Swama is quite conservative, she might find some common ground with one of her more liberal colleagues and Senator Megan Hunt of Omaha, particularly on housing. This is a problem for so many people in Nebraska, regardless of whether they rent or own. While Hunt wants to work on housing legislation, she points to other factors being a part of Nebraska's brain drain. I think the social climate that we have in this state is probably the number one reason that I hear people leaving the state. Hunt believes ending workplace discrimination for LGBTQ individuals, along with upping tipped minimum wage and embracing cannabis, can go a long way. This generation, uh, does not accept inequality. We do not accept discrimination. And, you know, it, it, you have a hard time arguing for it, and our generation's not likely to buy it. Freshman Senator Jen Day of Omaha agrees with Hunt on ending discrimination. She also owns a small business and thinks the state needs to do a better job on helping out young entrepreneurs instead of huge corporations. I know that there's a lot of other Nebraskans that would stay if they had the ability to start their own business and then to continue to function um, within that business. While Day wants to aid small businesses, she also believes in requiring paid sick and family leave, which business often opposes. I don't think they're mutually exclusive, mm -hmm. um, and I think that they will, they have to work together to down the road making Nebraska the type of place where people want to stay. While the legislature can certainly pass bills inside these walls to help solve the problem, the entire problem is not going to be solved in Lincoln. Senator Mike Flood tells me that each town in the state is going to have to focus on making sure that they grow as well as making sure they're welcoming. It isn't the government's job, it isn't the university's job to make sure that your hometown is livable. That's a decision that the people that live there make. And not just livable for people over 30, but livable for people that are 20-something. Flood, who represents Norfolk and some of the surrounding area, points to the same data Drews has saying once you're 30 and live in Nebraska, you're likely to stay. He wants to build up small towns across the state, so many that grow up in the area never have to leave. I don't think we have to turn Grand Island or Norfolk or Fremont into Dallas, Austin, or Boston. We just have to make the quality of life investments, make sure we have the jobs, and make sure that we have good paying jobs. Not one senator I spoke with believes the problem is going away soon. I think it's always going to be a struggle, but we can chip away at it and make progress. There is no magic bullet, but incrementally we have to make decisions every day that put Nebraska at the forefront of innovation.
And if things don't change and Nebraskans believe the problem is getting worse, Hunt says they always have the power of the ballot box. If you can't change the people, change the people. And so what we really need to do is just elect different people who actually reflect the views of, of the majority of Nebraskans. In Lincoln, John Kipper, 3 News Now.